Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is part two of a two-part series, so this is going to be the end of this one. The first one, we just showed the garage floor being replaced. Now we're going to do the entire driveway, remove and replace, widen it. It's going to be a lot, lot better area, a lot better use of space here. Plus, uh, we did we found out in the first video that we have we only have two inches of slope from the garage floor to the city sidewalk, which isn't enough in 65 feet. So that's why the garage was flooding, you know, before we got here. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put some drains and we're going to drill through that curve face at the bottom of the flow line, which picks up six inches of slope. So now all of a sudden you got eight inches of slope you can work with. That's the difference with drains. You pick up the curb face height. Now we're just breaking it out. That was a separate pour. They did it sometime. That's a Vermeer CTX 100 with the uh, Erskine breaker. Also, in a previous video, we did a curb beyond this wood fence back further. And uh, we're going to continue that curb on out. So this is just going to be a raised curb. And then it's a double-sided picket fence. So he just took off the one side of the pickets. And then they're going to drop back down on top of the curb. So that's the idea behind that. He'll have to cut them all, of course. But they're going to all be the same length because I'm going to put the curb in level. So it's going to make it real easy. And I got Carlos out here, which I always get when I have a full load to remove a, a Super 10. I always bring him in. So that initial pile he removed was actually from the garage floor. I just stockpiled it over there with my mini tractor. And now I'm just on the back end. I'm gonna, I went around the perimeter with the small tractor just so you wouldn't damage the house or get too close to the house. So I could maneuver that little three footer in those tight areas and kind of clear the perimeter for him in advance. Now I'm just pushing into him with uh you know the small tractor also we're taking a little dirt at the same time because every scoop is going to have a little dirt in there there's no getting around that so what that means because this concrete's coming out about three and a half four inches thick and the elevations aren't going to change a whole lot other than the cross slope to a drain in the planter bed but it means that I could either put base in here and get it back to three and a half, four inches deep, or I could go ahead and pour it five and a half inches deep without base. And my thinking is, is that five and a half inches of concrete is better than three and a half inches with base. So I'm just going to pour it thick. That's basically what it boils down to. There is some sprinklers. You can see how there's some broken lines that went across the old driveway. Because he had sprinklers down that strip of grass in between the two ribbons. And then he also had sprinklers, that drip line that went along these bushes. So we've got to abandon a lot of sprinklers and then just pull a new PVC across. Because that PVC that we hit was that uh, really thin gauge where when you step on it, it cracks, that kind of stuff. So we ended up going with the 40, Schedule 40. Yeah, I can never figure out why they put the cheap PVC in, you know, because all the work's in the trench, digging the trench and putting it together. And, I mean, you get the Schedule 40, you're not saving much money by go skimping on the uh, stuff underground. So this new curb is going to encase those steel posts, even though they have a, a one-foot footing on them. It'll get encased again with some new concrete and some uh, reinforcement in there. The way I dug this drain line in is actually I just used a laser and I went ahead and hit the bottom of that trench all the way through to make sure that, because you know when you over dig a trench and then you put loose material under there to adjust your pipe, well what happens in the future is that pipe drops because you've got uncompacted soil underneath you know, your pipe. So you gotta dig that pipe, that underground perfect. That way you got good solid undisturbed soil to set your drain line on. 
that way in the future it don't drop and pull apart the seams because that's what happens there's the pipe there he cut through all that putting those posts in because he had a drain in the back initially so we're going to tie in right at the front to that old drain there's about five feet of the old left that hits goes through the curb face now on the since we're, we're widening everything so we had to move all the sprinkler heads back and i used some funny pipe on those heads that way i could just kind of maneuver them around until i get the concrete poured and then i can put them into the position after that form comes out So we're higher than that old sidewalk at this point just a little bit so in other words what will happen probably in the future someone's gonna have to remove that sidewalk tie it back into the new driveway at the right height but there's a lot of concrete to do on this property the whole backyard needs concrete too so another day another pour and I'm just running 45s on this it's a little easier to snake when you got 45s or push a water hose through. We did two drains in the planter about 10 feet apart down there on the low end by the garage. The main problem is, is he has a chunk of concrete on that side yard that is really kind of too low. We Ideally, you take all the, on these kind of properties with a detached garage that was put in level with the sea sow, you just demo all the concrete around the whole backyard, raise the garage floor up, everything around it, and just get some positive slope. But it's costly. You know, uh, the funny thing about these garages is I've actually jacked them off of the foundation with bottle jacks raised the stem wall and dropped them back down i did a few of those actually here's the curb all set up i had to notch it up and over those uh, footings for those fence posts just at one spot there so the new concrete will encase that and then i have one three eighths inch uh owens corning it's called pink bar it's a uh, supposedly comparable to half inch steel according to their test they did there at the lab but um, I like it really because it doesn't rust that's why I use it now the concrete in the in the garage which is in part one that's drying right now that's already been placed I'm just sitting on that while, while we uh, set up the driveway and there's Carlos which helped finish you can see that in part one in the garage now we're getting ready to strip this little curb and you know I had 1% accelerator in that curb and the garage floor so it went off really nicely I'm just using a half inch top tool and then a half inch radius edger Because I put some, see the plastic board, I screwed that into the picket fence just to give me a, a nice elevation. And that way it's not going to be touching that wood as well. Now I'm going to edge it along that existing curb where they meet. That's another maneuver that I will do at, at some point. Oh, here it is. That's a five inch wide, 12 inch long trowel there. So five inches covers that whole top just about, especially once you have your edgers run. So the whole setup on this is cross slope into the planter where the trees are, and then that's where the drains are. The pipe itself is actually running under the driveway and then it tees off into the planter bed. So the beauty of that 
is if you ever wanted to plant something in this area and you started digging, you're not going to get into the drain. It's not going to be in the way, in other words. And it's protected because it's below the concrete. Right there where the gas meter is, the concrete was wrapped around that gas line. And whenever I get into these old houses that are, you know, 180, 100 years old and original, all original equipment, I try to avoid uh, getting near pipes. Because if you break one in these situations, you could potentially chase them all the way down the street to find a connection point. You know, that's how corroded they are. We're setting these, the reinforcement, at about 18 inch centers both directions. Also, I'm going to add some fiber mesh into the load. I add the fiber when the truck gets here. I just climb up on the truck and dump it in. Mix it for about three to five minutes, and you got a good mixture. This is all ready to pour. We've got it compacted. See the space underneath the form? That's how you know that it's over, over four inches thick. There's that gas line. I just saw cut that. Also, it lessens the likelihood of it cracking because I had that 45 there. There's a nice overhead view with the drone. This is ANA Ready Mix, also known as Associated. There's a valley off of this garage. I just sloped it because that patio and the garage, the garage is level, the patio existing is pretty low. So I had to create somewhat of a, a you know, drainage pattern over to that side yard. And you can't go a lot, you know, because we have a cross slope, right? That's going to be about two inches of cross slope. So now as far as slope from garage floor to end of pipe and street, now we're down to about four inches, right, of slope. So by the time you get cross slope and you get your drains above top of uh, flow line in the street, um, you don't want to uh, get too much cross slope because you'll lose, you lose all your slope to street. Pretty tricky situation here. I got a nice hook. What these hooks are that we're using to pull the bars up, they're really designed for fifth wheels. It's the tool you use to reach out over there to, uh, I guess, disconnect your fifth wheel. But it's beautiful because it has a hook on it and it's about three feet long. We ran out of concrete. Now, if I had this thing graded, you know, at three, three and a half, four inches, I would have made it. But, you know, since I didn't, since I went thick instead of adding base, that's what you run into. But thick concrete's better than thin concrete on base. I only I got a yard here, you know. You know what happens a lot of time when you get a yard from a plant? Uh, the drivers. You know, they're used to just doing kind of a routine, you know, wash the top of the truck down, clean the fins, blah, blah, blah. Well, when you do that with the yard, you run into a, a problem with really wet concrete. So that's why you always have to think about, well, how many yards do I got? What should I do? 
to get it there that you know it's within you know five inch or six inch slump I had what I ended up doing because that's that last yard was pretty wet I ended up pushing all that wet stuff into my first load and remixing it with the stuff that was already on the ground a little lot more work you know but um, I just didn't like the looks of that so I had to do it we have Juan here finishing on this driveway and we have Carlos and then of course my son Tyler he's out he's troweling We're going to do a lot of saw cuts in this. We're going to do one joint off the corner of that step, you know, to get me overnight without cracking problem. And I would do one there off of the sidewalk. And then I'll come back and I'll cut this up. Wait a couple days because it is drying slow because uh, we got cloud coverage. We're only at about 70 degrees high. Overnights are about 50. So I actually had to wait two days to get a cut in here because it was that, you know, fresh. It wasn't normally I can cut these the next day, especially with the fiber mesh I add in there. That um, holds that surface together. So when that blade's cutting, it doesn't spall it, you know, but uh, it didn't work this time. So I had to wait two days rather than just go back. That's a little mini Fresno there, which is nice, you know, if you don't want to get any missed spots because that's going to conform to the slope that you've already got with the ball float. So it's going to really hit every square inch of it. Notice we have a saw cut out of the garage, which you can see in part one how we did that. But that that cut in the middle of the garage is going to continue right through the driveway. In the garage, I went with 3,000 psi 1% polar set. Out in the outside, I just went with straight 3,000 psi, no accelerators, and you could really tell the difference. Like the garage was about four hours. You know, beginning to end on the dry time and finish. And then out here, we we're there about six, a good six and a half hours. We ended up brooming that along the house already because that's where it dried out first on the high side. So we'll broom that and work our way to the planter bed. My horsehair broom had a bunch of dingleberries in it. So I had to uh, use Juan's nylon. My uh, horsehair didn't get rinsed out so it had all those crunchies in it. And I uh, just wasn't gonna get the job done so I had to uh, use this nylon, which worked pretty darn good really had a nice texture to it but texture doesn't really matter because you're gonna see what happened what the homeowner did to this concrete after I left he got on it a little early with the water hose and kind of uh, he almost did a sand wash on it you know you see those little that's the fiber mesh you can see there balling up as you pull the broom across and that's really a good sign is if you can see the fiber you know that it's in there you didn't get shorted that fiber wears off pretty short order
So this whole driveway that we did here was a was a trade out because Bob, the owner here, he's a pilot which flies banners along the beach, and that uh, we swapped. He flew the banner for a few weeks, and now I did all this. That was our trade off. But here's the next day. We got back here to strip it out and saw cut it. Actually, this is we waited two days before we came back because it was drying that slow. Which is a good sign because the longer it takes to cure out, the stronger inevitably it's going to be. There's Brody. That's his, uh, the male dog, the female dog. I forget her name, but it uh, looks real similar to my dog. Hi, David O'Dell here. I'm with the homeowner, Bob. I just arrived back on the job site the next day after the pour. And right when I got out of the truck, I went, well, what happened here, Bob? Anyway, I didn't, because I see footprints and it looks like you dragged the hose on it. Uh, can you explain exactly what you were doing out here? I walked on it and didn't know I wasn't supposed to walk on it. It was a little green. And uh -huh. then I drug the hose because I couldn't reach way back with the low water pressure. So then it, it looks like it snowed out here this morning or overnight. Yeah, right now it looks really bad. Well, let's take a look at all the footprints. These are my number size 12. So it looks like right here what you did is uh, you had some footprints and then you tried to... Yeah, I scuffed it a little you, bit. You scuffed it up a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. That's my signature, man. Well, what else do we got? We got... Yeah, these are definitely your footprint. What size is that? 10? <laughs> 10 or 11? Those are 12. Oh, size 12, yeah. That's a batch. <laughs> But I like the custom look. Look at that. Whoa, what do we got here? How did this? That looks kind of interesting. Now that's where I put a lot of the water pressure. Uh, okay. When I had it in the nozzle form. How about this particular location? I must have drugged the uh, hose through there. Well, even as bad as it looked right now, the good news is once this is all cured out white, you're not going to see any of it. Another month it's or two will be gone. It's going to all disappear. Good. I appreciate that. So that's the good news. So if anybody ever sees this the next day after a pour, unless it's really embossed in the concrete, all this is going to disappear. So it's not as bad as it looks, in other words. I appreciate the great job, the help. It yep. was a lesson learned. Yep, you're yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, so I'm going to go back on this job. And I'm going to catch it again, you know, once it's all cured out. And we're going to see if we can still see those marks. And we can reference this video to the to a walkthrough in the future on this just to see if I'm right about all these marks that he put in there fading out. So we've got, you know, a good four inch concrete. So we're going to go one inch deep on the cuts. You need 25% of the depth. That's why um, saw cutting is better because it's real hard to do hand joints at one inch deep or if you're doing six inch concrete or anything thicker trying to run a joiner that deep to get that 20% is nearly impossible. The moment of truth is when you break out the water to start cleaning. That's when you find out is the water draining or isn't it. And in this case it drained really well. I was kind of surprised that it did as well as it did considering what we were working with here. So those are all the tire marks from the tractor going in and out. 
you know, another option to get in the, get these properties in this area to slope uh, property is to change the design on the apron approaches. Instead of ramping up, you come up just at, they're like at a 9% slope for seven feet. Come in there at about 2% and just ramp up the wings to where a city sidewalk might be. And you pick up all that slope that way too. That's probably what I would do. Change the whole drawing on the schematics down at the building department for these approaches, you know, and drop them down. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button. That, that way you'll get notified as soon as we upload the next video because you never know when I'm going to do a giveaway. Have a good one.